be in. It also typically includes women who are perceived in a way of society. So a woman who's dancing at a club, for example, can song is considered one way as opposed to another, depending on the way in which society interprets the way they act. What does the message look like? I already said the message tends to be highly homogenous in nature. So we're not saying that there's no nuance in rap, which I'm sure is what Lucy's going to kill in a minute. There are rappers like No Shame or Me who break away from this trend and try to sell indie rap that does have an audience, it does exist. The problem is there are thousands of other rappers who are exploited on the way. And while Mickey Mouse might have leverage over homosexuality, Drake's backup dancers do not. Insofar as that is true, we think the message that you receive on their side of the house is likely one that is incredibly homogenous in nature. But secondly, the message is likely to be reductive. It's tied to specific lyrics and specific lyrical content that usually talks about specific kinds of sexuality, usually very heteronormative, and usually very focused on a kind of transactional exchange that leaves the men in power and doesn't allow women to express themselves properly. How is this received by different groups of people? So we're not claiming the unnuanced version of this. Right? The unnuanced version of this claim is people will hear a song and be more sexist. The nuanced version of this claim is that you listen to songs on aggregate over a period of time from a specific genre, and over that period of time, you make connections to those songs and to the genre of music in general that influences the way you behave. That is to say, this informs your expectations about how you perceive people in the world around you and how you perceive women overall. What then is the impact of this? I think that first thing. Men in general, when they are exposed to a culture that is saturated in this type of industry, are likely to be even a more sexist manner for women and form more negative perceptions. This doesn't happen immediately. It's not like somebody listens to a party next song or listens to a team in a shop and then goes out and decides to be sexist, but rather the cultural milieu in which they operate under puts an incredible amount of pressure on them to behave and externalize a certain type of behavior that they believe the song is inviting and the genre is inviting. But secondly, women are more likely to internalize a sexist message or sexist self perceptions right? This is particularly important, right? Because not only is it the case that you gaslight yourself into believing that you must behave in a certain way, that's the most important way to be a woman, you know, I have gaslight yourself into believing that is the best way to succeed in the industry by internalizing those messages. But moreover, I think at the point in which you see people who have succeeded, you are unaware of the things they had to do to get there or the struggles they went through. So it sells on the lie that you can do the same thing if you start with your content that is similar, where you just have the same manager as them, or engage in the same kind of behavior as them, insofar as it's unlikely to achieve your success, a variety of stuff you in a moment, we know that's particularly harmful. What changes as a result? Firstly, I think the quality of rap goes down. And I realize that this is an impact, I like that silly to some of you. But I think listening to good music is incredibly important in the form of subjective experience about your life, the way you perceive yourself, and the way you perceive others. I think having a more homogenous rap genre is harmful not to just women in the industry, but women everywhere. But secondarily, I think you just get more bad behavior towards women, more microaggressions, and when you mix them together at scale, it mount up to be particularly harmful and you have bad points in your life that I think is incredibly harmful. I think those changes are both particularly bad. Before I bring the women in the music industry for our second key convention, I'll take that. Given rap, like old rap, even if you want to say pre-90s, pre-80s, pre-70s, was far more sexist, far more horrible to women, far more abhorrent. How in God's name yeah, is running? Sure, there was many rap that was very important to women that existed in the past. That does not it is not intentionally our intention. There was also more room for niche people to spread themselves in the past. Our claim is that the modernizing effect has given more room for prominent women to rise to the top. Sure. What it has not done, and this is crucial, is given women more capacity and leverage over the industry. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Why is it that for women in the industry? The so industry is incredibly exploited and harmful women. Why? Note that key power brokers in the music industry tend to want to exploit women with sexuality and see it as a currency. There's going to be prominent male rappers seeking out rising people to help us get sex in exchange for promoting singles and things like this. This is the advice that you're given in order to do more promotion by a more prominent male rapper in order to speak with producers in order to get your singles to sell. But more producers know that sex sells. And when they operate from a power dynamic, they will impose a specific kind of prescription on you, and you really do not have a choice when you operate at a less power, a weaker power differential in comparison to them. Inherently, what I think this does is it means none of this is a bad thing inherently, right? Women should be allowed to express themselves however they see fit. But the problem is in the modern music industry, it's not women making the choice. Why is this incredibly harmful? I think for three reasons. First, I think it is harmful in terms of the way in which women are able to navigate the industry. On your way up, even if you manage to make success and sell a hit single, which is incredibly rare, it's very hard to do so in the era of stream where you're completely facing competition from many, many different sources. You are still going to go through a massive amount of exploitation to get there. But secondly, it deludes you into believing that this is the only way to behave and the only kind of music that you want to make. And finally, there's just less quality music out there that all women can enjoy. Incredibly high standard of music. Uh, thanks the Prime Minister and welcome the leader of all to start the opening of the vision for
I'm sorry, Max, give me a second to plug in. Yeah, that works. Cool. All right, everybody. Three arguments from OO. Number one, modern rap is substantively good and empowering to women and also enjoyable to listen to for women. Uh, second, that where modern rap cannibalizes previously existing rap, the part of the motion that we seem to ignore, it is a lot better. Uh, and third of all, women are people, rap is good, they enjoy listening to it. So first, why is the nature of rap substantially good in our world? I think that opening government vastly overstates the parts of the industry that are bad. There's been a huge democratization of the music industry due to the rise of platforms like Spotify and Apple Music, which means that there's far less necessary reliance on an individual producer in order to make deals and far more decentralization. Second, the rise of social media and the internet has made it easier for artists to self-market, start on SoundCloud and all kinds of other things. Uh, and third of all, general social changes. People don't literally listen to 90s rap and think, oh, I should go shoot someone or, oh, I should you know, go assault women. They listen to it often for musical reasons or lyrical reasons. They listen often to modern rap for reasons that are more nuanced than just the nature of the lyrics themselves. So that is, of course, very important in the debate. So the first thing that I want to talk about is what kinds of themes are we seeing uh, in modern rap? For an opening government that was very, very heavy on assertions about the nature of modern rap, and very short examples to back up those assertions, uh, I think that broadly, the types of lyrics that we're seeing from artists like Black China or Doja Cat are not purely sexualizing towards women. Over they're doing so, opening government is neglecting the context of the fact that they are in response to a type of person who has heard 90s rap, who understands the way that that previous industry functions and what a sexualization of men to react. This is an empowering way that women can push back. Or when female rappers talk about, you know, clapbacks against uh, Drake talking to underage women and stuff like this, this is an important thing for them to call out other parts of the industry. And I think that's good not just because it substantially often replaces very famous old rap that does spread the exact same messages that opening government is talking about, but more broadly because the messages themselves are often quite good. Uh, when Doja Cat has music talking about how men are shit, uh, how, you know, when Lizzo talks about the variety of ways in which female gender, as a, uh, which female sexuality as it relates to size, as it relates to men right. themselves, as it relates to date, are actually comparatively nuanced. And I think maybe opening government hasn't listened enough to the smaller female actors. Maybe I haven't either. <laughs> the, broader point that I want, the broader point that I want to make sure is this surely can't be the case that only essentializing highly sexualized messages towards men are things that sell simply because there shouldn't be that much demand for it. There should be women who want to listen to all kinds of rap. And moreover, the part of the motion that opening government doesn't engage with at all is that, you know, for, for Kendrick to have rap that talks about deconstructing male masculinity, that talks about his uh, trans uncle and his family, that too is good for women, the sense that incredible man that men like is doing rap that is much less offensive for women. And on some level, that cause like men to want to deconstruct gender or think about gender a lot more. And I think that the balance of whether we think it's done more harm than good, you keep quick fire, please, uh, done more harm than good, really comes down in part to the messaging that men uh, are seeing as well. Before I go on, closing up. Uh, Rick Ross raps about uh, putting a molly in a drink. Uh, and then taking a woman home very clearly non-consensually. What's the feminist spin on that? Uh, not very good, but I think the fact that we're talking about it and engaging in discourse is relatively good. And I think that if you compare that to the fact that there was so much rap in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, that was probably not very modern and did a lot of those things anyway, the fact that modern rap has a greater representation of these voices that are different is relatively important. And I'll get more into that later. Uh, I think that it is not true that life is a celebrity, even if your producer sucks, and even if your producer is exploitative and all these things is that bad. These rappers make a lot of money. They become celebrities who have a voice to speak out. They simply become women who have had the, the platform women's issues with their newfound thing. And often men listen to them because if they're getting recommended lots of rap on Spotify, eventually female rappers come up. So there's a greater exploration and reach to men from female rappers that exist. But more relevantly, male rappers do face pressure. Rick Ross does get called out by female rappers and faces pressure. And as other social movements do their work, we also see a shift reactively in what the bar can be or what the line can be across in terms of how sexist lyrics can be in modern rap. I also think it's incredibly difficult for closing government to show that Rick Ross style rap is on, you know, on an ascending trend or is likely to be dominant within modern rap, given that there are so many vehicles for it to be called out both by other rappers and also by people hate. Like on a certain level, most people know that they, first of all, they don't hate that message literally when they listen to it. I think that's quite obvious. And they feel uncomfortable with it on some level, which means that Rick Ross is a dedicated set of sexist fans, but it's not because that has contagion to the industry overall and harms women on balance, even though it's regrettable that that discourse exists.
why do we deconstruct gender successfully? I think it's part of the discourse that we engage in. Where there is bad rap, the fact that there are more female rappers and more women listening to rap in general means that we are far more aware of the way in which rap lyrics, both in the past and now, are problematic. Simply put, people post about it, they talk about it, their music taste is affected by it. Even where there is centralized music criticism, and sorry about pitchfork, but where there is centralized music criticism, it's often called out and discussed. Please be quiet, thank you. No, where it's often called out and discussed. The end point for this is that modern rap is tends to be better than very famous previous rap, and we have people internalizing that. But even where it is bad, it is possible to appreciate rap for reasons that go beyond the lyrics. I think a full assessment of what is good for women has to assess whether they enjoy listening to music, and indeed has to assess whether or not they can look past certain lyrics which are problematic and simply enjoy music because it is music. It is true that in some cases we don't get a full pushback to rap music that is flawed. There's no capacity to change lyrics for some rappers. But very simply put, it is true that people of all kinds, women included, listen to rap a lot. And they tend to enjoy it because it's better often than other genres for a lot of people. They enjoy the interaction of creative lyrics and beats. And modern rap is quite good simply for their musical tastes, capacity to listen to music, the way in which it helps them distract themselves in their life, and all kinds of stuff. Why does it matter that trends are moving uh, in the way that we have proven? Look, open government did not invent the sexualization for it. I think it is true that there is a broader essentialization of women that happens because female rappers fit into a genre of talking about sex. That is reactive and has to be understood in context. But it is not clearly flawed. Like, I think for Black women to take back their sexuality, which has been routinely ignored by mainstream culture, and say assertively that I'm a woman, I will control sex, I will do it with my badass pussy, like that is all very obviously good for a set of women who enjoy listening to that and values quite a lot, and have very other, a few other avenues that are as bold in pop culture, where you see art that explicitly states very sexualized imagery, and people who want to reach out for that get it. But some people just enjoy listening to the arts or find Doja Cat voice teasing, and it's also good for those women who see female celebrities, enjoy the female voice succeeding in rap, and benefit in that case. But moreover, I do think that the existence of female rappers, even if it's not direct discursively by clapbacks and politics and drinks for underage kids, simply acts to mean that liberal men who oppose Rick Ross begin to give fewer of their dollars to him by listening to him on Spotify and feel more uncomfortable about it. But then there are alternatives. They enjoy rap, but they can feel morally good about rap because there are rappers who are male and female, Kendrick or Doja Cat, who they can listen to instead of the bad guys. And therefore, over time, we see a reduction of that. Look, this motion is a very strong burden for guys. We can prove it's equal. They have to prove it does more harm than good. It is very clear that rap is enjoyable for a large amount of people, and very clear that trends are moving in the right direction. We're proud to have folks. Uh, I think we are up. Uh, just a reminder before we keep going. It's like, we're very excited. It's round four. Just be mindful, just so people can hear your train of thought and the judges can hear the speakers. But yeah, DPM, whatever you're ready. <laughs> I suspect by the end of this debate, this is going to be a debate about characterization. What do you think modern rap actually looks like? And I think, unfortunately, for open opposition, they give the game away by talking about technological changes and what that is meant for what rap is produced and what rap and hip hop is listened to. In particular, what Max tells you is the prime vector in which people access music now will be through things like Spotify. Apple Music, Amazon Music, and similar. How exactly does that work? The first things you listen to and you will listen to regularly will impact the recommendations you get. As someone who actually wants to sell, or in this case, be streamed a lot, you will need to be recommended to a large number of potential viewers and potential listeners. What is the implication of that? That you are much more likely to coalesce with the existing norms and what is already popular. That is, of course, not true about each and every single individual, but it does mean that historical trends, things which were true about rap in the early 2000s, still have a huge impact on rap today, because if they did not, then because those are what's popular, that is what's on people's immediate place. What are the consequences of that then? I am not going to deny that there could be some progressive rap or hip hop, which is good for women. I just do not think that is the majority. And for those individuals who enjoy the music to begin with, they're more likely to get a reinforcement of the negative messages which they have already heard. That is the problem because of technological changes as to what the majority of this looks like. 
The trend then is at very best a small deviation from the past rather than a large deviation from the past. And a handful of examples to prove the opposite does not deal with the reality of what the music industry then actually looks. With that in mind, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, on the issue of modern empowerment. Now, are these, are these lyrics largely sexualized and sexual? I think both sides agree that at least a portion of them are, and there's a large amount of harm that is created. This is not a debate about whether we should rap, rap music overall. It could easily be bad in the 2000s and 1990s as well. I don't think that's particularly relevant here. But these lyrics will be sexualized. And I think it's worth just noting all the things which Matt told you about why that is so harmful for women. That creates expectations on them. That creates expectations on how you should behave, but also expectations for others about what you get, what you believe, and what you actually want. And in this case, actually, I think the fact that it's modern and potentially created by women is more of a harm than older women. Why is that true? Because listening to something from the 90s or early 2000s, you're probably aware you're listening to something from the 90s and early 2000s. Things which are probably dated in terms of the morality and ideas that are taught. Things which are probably sexist, but they are only made by men and probably could not be deconstructed in the way that open opposition suggests. To that degree, if this music is bad, the fact that this modern actually increases the badness, but you don't have the simple that was music for its time, it is now music for modern time. So that's the first problem which we know in terms of what these lyrics actually mean. Secondly, the, the, the second thing on this is what that actually means for women themselves to actually listen to it. It is certainly true. Women, men will like the music. I'm unsure why that's necessarily about modern rap, this is other types of rap. And if they have to listen to even more sexist older rap, I am fine with them still getting the benefits from it. I just don't think that is that consequential in the context of this debate. But third, I actually think that when you hear these messages from women, it is the worst possible outcome. Because that is when you think that these are large to large degree genuine. That is when you think that this is what women actually behave. Not all women, of course, but the point is that it's in context. So imagine what actually happens. You, you're in a club, you listen to, you, you, see the woman, you see a woman in a club listening to or dancing to this music. What is your assumption? Now, I don't think your assumption that they did that simply, but it happens again and again and again. And you sort of normalize the way in which individuals should actually respond to it. But then let's talk about the deconstruction of these messages. The big claim which open opposition wants to talk about, which is, well, now, that, now there's a lot of discussion about this. And that's good because you can be called out in roughly two ways. One, by artists themselves, and two, on social media by other individuals. So let's talk about artists themselves calling you out. Uh, that music can exist, but that doesn't necessarily mean the message gets out. And more importantly, does it get out to the same people who are going to act sex in a sexist way because of it? I'm actually not sure what the link there actually is. In fact, I think the opposite is more likely to be true. That if you really like this music, the diss track, the one which is actually very critical of Kendrick Lamar, the one which is very critical of Drake, is probably something which you're less likely to be recommended for. Now they know that you could have, for instance, discussions. They know you're ready for it. They know social media. Is this actually something the majority of people read? Or is it something a tiny subset of the no, population I... reads, even a tiny subset of women? I think the latter is more likely to be true. And the actual justification from this comes from opening opposition, because they themselves note that the vast majority of people like this music, and they like this music because they like the music, but that's really they think a great deal about the word. They aren't going to pay attention necessarily to everything which is being said. Now, that does not mean that it doesn't have an impact. It means just a few sentences that are repeating again and again and again. When Kendrick Lamar says something like, I will take you up the couch even though you have stretch marks. Uh -huh. That's something which is something which ends up being repeated again and again. You don't have to understand it by itself, but nonetheless, you can get the negative as a result of it. What does this then mean? That overall, as a result of this, that even though there can be the deconstruction of it, the forums of deconstruction and the forums of listening are often going to be incredibly uh, going to be very distinct. The same person who's listening to the music is often not going to be the person who's going to get the same level of deconstruction. So at the end of this point, what we what, what are we showing you? That yes, it is true. Rap and hip hop is more democratic than it was before. Fair enough. But that does not mean that that same rap is going to be the ones which are prominent and what is going to be listened to. 
That is important, and that is because of the technological evolution. Secondly, that even though there can be other forms which exist, the fact that people are just listening to snippets rather than even get the full message across means that all the harms we talk about can exist. And actually, there's probably some really agreement about the harms when you have these kinds of sexist messages where people are willing to control their own sexuality. And finally, even when you end up with this deconstruction of the message, that deconstruction does not necessarily reach the same person who reacts negatively as a result. The, the overall conclusion then is that, yes, this might be bad music, this might be bad music, previous of rap might be bad, but they are all bad overall. I think the BPM, a uh, reminder to speakers to take POIs, they might put those comparisons. Uh, Viola, here. Why not both? I think the stream won't capture you if you're there. But obviously, it's less important than you see if you're comfortable. So you don't think about it. Taylor Swift is the biggest female artist in the world. She has songs about how a fellow woman who she is envious of is successful because she is willing to do things on a mattress, about how she's better than other women because she wears t-shirts whereas other people wear short skirts. Women are really, really good because we celebrate from the stability of our world. On the other hand, they have girls who are told constantly by parents, by teachers, by employees, by employers to dress better, to not be such a slut, to control yourself. This is the world that rap is really, really popular in. It's a fundamentally counter-cultural movement that corrects deep and poisonous misogyny, that restricts female sexuality, and tells black women you're not beautiful on their side. Three clashes. The first, what on earth is OG saying with algorithms and why is the majority of music really being really apparent on our side? The second thing is about why gender is really being discussed that correct for problematic biases. And the final thing is just contextualizing it in the context of what hip hop looked like in the past. First, I'm sorry to say that modern rap and hip music did not invent sexism. It got big producers with bright ideas for film and aspiring artists. It got introduced to a scantily clad backup dancer who has pulled a single line in a music video. What it did invent is aggressive female sexuality. It allows us to participate in the idea that we are also people who earn a lot of money, who live a high life, who are able to work our way to the top, we can pick and choose from men as we desire. It does push the envelope into black female sexuality and to the different kinds of body types that are really, really desirable. It's bizarre for you to say, well, there are technological changes, the algorithm is something that means that, that you just copy the same music as, music as everyone else. Few responses. The first is, Algorithms apply to literally every genre of music. So if they're concerned about how it replicates chromatic tropes, then they have from every kind of music, which is obviously bizarre. Two, what are the problematic preferences that they think are in bad charts? Because like everybody listens to them. Like this is a very, very picky kind of line. Like it is not the case that just because lots of people enjoy something that isn't necessarily chromatic and stereotypical. I would say that it's a much more common take that rape is bad, and if someone sings about how body is something that you put into women's drugs, uh, women's drinks, and you go, ugh, like, who the fuck is this creep, and you look away, and that makes ways that you use it to your algorithms as well. Social media is something that has also come specifically with the rise of modern hip hop music as well. And what that means is to count the cancel culture where you do say, like, Drake is a fucking creep, or Tommy is new one that's really, really bad lyrics, and therefore you just collectively won't listen to it, and that can mean that it's less present in your algorithm and your combinations as well. Two, it's also the case that we have better, more democratic, and more rising 
each artist does the result on Modern Hip Hop. They go through SoundCloud, they go through TikTok, where the club can go by little snippets of fun, interesting sounds by having different aspects of other people that you really do well. So there's a very strong incentive to make something that's different and challenges people's preconceptions. And I think that that's why they really even diverse music as well. For those reasons, I don't think it's true that you just replicate chromatic stereotypes. You get a diversity of music, and people can choose the music that resonates with them. They say, well, you can't reach people who these stereotypes really need to be corrected. Two things. The first thing is, I don't care. It's fine if a sexist man listens to sexist music. If it also means that a woman has gone through a horrific rape and abuse, listen to music that makes her feel good about herself, for example. I think that women should get to feel this with music that makes her feel confident and safe walking through the streets or just for the courage to stand to her parents because that's a much more direct relationship after your lives and more confidence. Like, you can to tell your girlfriend that what she's doing to is really, really bad, changes women's behaviors much, much more than problematic music encourages them to commit sexual harassment and assault. Just because that's a very chunkable consequence, and it obviously are meant to be more convincing. But the second thing, reason why I also don't care is because I think, frankly, that we should let women decide what really feels good to them. And that's the second thing, Clara, why does this course mean that, that you have some part of on our side? Because they say that great culture and misogyny is a big problem. We say that this music makes men better as well. The first reason is that this is women's sexual agency, whereas previously it was unacceptable to say about like being women having been doing sex, and there are fewer female artists in the scene. What this means is that one, men understand what it feels like to be a sexual object as well. I think the empathy of being like, hmm, this makes me want to feel kind of gross, or it makes me feel really good to get these kinds of compliments, generally makes men better in the context of heterosexual relationships. Number two, it gives women an expectation that you should enjoy sex. Your partner should step up, for example, which is that you don't partake in sex, which feels gross and uncomfy. The kind of factual is like, historically, you have men describing the sex that they, they enjoy, and no music at all, not overall sex for women, which I like, like okay, yeah. And the third thing is that we would say also elevates female voices. They say it's just a sentence, it's just a snippet. If it's Nicki Minaj, if the fucking Grammys, or someone who's something a huge award broadcasted to millions of people across America, everyone's going to me, and it doesn't matter if you're a, you're a really close man who hates women, you know, listen to that anyway, you have no choice. I think that's what makes modern rap music so good, because it's become so dominant that you feel these kinds of narratives no matter who you are. And fine, if you're old and 50 and mad in the Midwest, like, you might think right. this is kind of outrageous, but you start from a perspective of, like, well, obviously, I think some of the points that they're making are kind of reasonable, but this is going too far. But this also validates some more seriously conceptions that women have a right to be uh, uh, being treated well, for example, obviously, the rest is bad. I think that person finding common ground makes people feel good as well. I'll take a few in closing. Matt. This is a revolution. Traditional rap can be bad in similar or different ways. That doesn't mean modern rap also has a very bad consequence. Your empowerment of some women, you can selectively self select and get that empowerment, comes at the cost of many, many other women. Final thought, which is, I do think that speech is retroactive. And the reason is like, the notion is, this us believes that the effect, that the effect has been positive. And that's modern rap in the context of society as well. We would say that rap music has become, that this addition to the rest of the music industry has corrected for many, many bad things because it corrected for gaps in the music industry previously, which was dominated by men in hip hop specifically, which meant that the way in which the black community was presented was also very masculine, for example, but also the fact that the female artists who did well were also old women, white women in the majority of cases, who sing about being like, about, about like heartbreak, for example, and being left by a man, and otherwise often portray themselves as victims. I think the reason why at the end of the day, female artists in hip hop have become so successful is because they speak to avoid on people's experiences about that they make people feel strong where really the others previously felt weak. They say, well, it's more pernicious because you question music that was made in the 90s. I don't think that's true because oftentimes you listen to something, you resonate with it, and therefore you fight them, or therefore you imitate these kind of behaviors, which doesn't matter what it is from, very happy to oppose. I thank the deputy leader of the opposition. Uh, now, welcome to the member of club. Let's start the back half exchange. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll remember.
laptop's a bit laggy, so it might take like a second for it to clock that you click on the button.
Harry Tosh. Okay. Uh, I'm just for Josh to communicate. Um, I'm just for Right, give me a second. This is also being streamed at this exact moment as well. Ah, the first one claim is simple, and that is that modern rap is often intrinsically in meters. There are two independent mechanisms here, but also both mechanisms also functions uh, like, I can also make this by flipping the two claims we get from OG and CG. The first is that rap historically is a point of context which is rooted in protest. Like, I just want to point out, like, Matt mentions the white managers of the band and the WA, one of the abbreviations for, which, which was abbreviations for one thing, was no whites allowed. Like, I'm sure their manager was real tasty. But in this <laughs> scenario, I think what's important is that the greats of rap are people like Tupac, like Biggie, like NWA, who said, fuck the police. It was inherently a protest song. The flip here then is that when Harish says, oh yes, you look to form a rap as you are a new artist coming through in order to develop the art form. This is true. But that's why like Kendrick Lamar isn't spending his time finding a better rap for anal than someone else. It's instead speaking about new truth to power in new ways. Talking about men's mental health and women's mental health about it. Talking about what it's like and how to be a good son to his mother and these different kinds of things, right? When you are developing a form, you when you want to go to the greats, because people want to be great. They don't want to be a little nobody. They want to be great. So they go to the greats, who were the protest rappers. And they just find ways to speak about this in new ways. Before I the CG, I want to also point out that rap uh, uh, as an art form is also one of the few left art forms that is spoken. That was to say, whereas in the past, things like folk used to be quite popular. Now it's just rap or pop. And in that scenario, spoken art inherently lends itself to being more personal because it's more conversational. It is directly telling someone a thing rather than trying to sing it broadly. Like trying to like sing in a fancy way, like, oh, I'm really depressed. Like, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know? I, no, I don't like I'm bothered about it. Um, but in that scenario, then, the people can say, like, like like, I don't know how to make that rap, but I'm not going to rap. <laughs> but they can do that because it is direct. It is spoken. And this is far more personable. But, and also it's far more personable because it's spreading on WhatsApp and things like this. I'll tell you about that. I just want to know, like, if you want to make this contingent on, like, social media existing now, and I won't put a period of mechanism to avoid that, don't you have one viral off of a song called Bitch and a Cow? Like, it wasn't off of, like, media executives deciding she fits the homogenized mold of modern rap. But in this scenario, then, I want to find another thing. And that's that when it is spoken, I agree with Mark that authenticity is the mark of success in rap. Not as you all have been great studies are really good, will attract this into the initial claim that rap and what is seen as good in rap is that which is authentic. But crucially, what is more authentic? Saying how you two stick it in the bum, like all the other rappers say, or instead speaking truth to power, speaking what has affected you personally, and thus which other people can relate to, and thus it feels inherently far more authentic. That's why that birthday song he keeps referencing, I've never heard of. But everyone knows about Kendrick Lamar. Everyone knows the heartbreak number five. This is there continually. And it's because it is far more authentic inherently. What are the impacts of all of this section? It means all rap, not just female rappers, is inherently ameliorative in multiple ways. It means right now we're talking about things like mental health for women and for men. And employing for men's mental health is obviously important for women in the sense that, firstly, it takes up the emotional burden that is often be fronted on them. And secondly, it avoids men's mental health going to scenarios where they exact the worst harms on their partners because they're inherently unstable, which we obviously want to avoid. But also, it just means that rather than maybe all rap, which was initially focused on protest during issues such as race, now we have more intersectional discussions of how race and class overlap, how what it's like to be a black sex worker and a woman when you are a doja cat. In these scenarios, 
like she was. Um, but in these scenarios, then you end up getting new discussion of new and myriad of things and how you should understand these issues within society for people who otherwise would look like a platform. Noting here crucially that no other modern art which is popular is anywhere near deep in protest and amelioration. Top has to be popular. It has to be something which those white male execs at the PM of Word are signed off on rather than something which you can push through yourself on things like WhatsApp. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it is probably true that some traditional rap was protest related. Is your claim literally that it also wasn't misogynistic? No, but I'm saying that the focus of what the race did and what they were most uh, allured, allured for, like, you know, there's a word that kind of sounds like that, it's good. Um, all, all this, uh, you know, like, goodness, um, before was their protest rap. The second broad claim that is specifically focusing on women in rap, but I think Mark points out like good scaling on why if you talk about all rap as a whole, it will then be listened to by more people and things like that. But aside from that, we're going to win the, project, the uh, issue of women in rap anyway. The first claim here, and why it's most important, and I want to this amplifies everything OO said, because they said you get to listen to all these good things, you get to hear and like demand like like proper like relations and equal sex, like equal relations in the act of sex and all these kinds of stuff. But it's continuing on you buying fully into that, feeling empowered in the situation. Why is this inherently empowering past the lyrics? Because the entrance of female rappers was the domination of an inherently male space. It showed that the most marginalized women in society, be they perhaps you know plus size, be they spec workers, and be they like people of color, they could overcome a dominated male space and become the most prominent people within that. And in that scenario, then it is inherently empowering. You see that you can exist in these spaces. You can demand what you want. And when you associate that, which these artists themselves say all the time, like those got mentioned on an award show, pushes these issues forward, this idea forward, that she made it there, and how important that is. That means you amplify all the benefits we, that we'll talk about in a while, but I'm going to go on them further. B, you just access a language of aggression, which is defiant, right? So the idea that women can talk about the issues which affect them in the way that men have already gotten to in the past means they too can talk about the way in which they're annoyed in life, which even if it doesn't lead to an end benefit, it's just inherently cathartic and ultimately cathartic for the women listening to those songs. You don't even necessarily need to feel safe walking out in the street. It's just the idea that you feel a little better because you are able to exact that aggression and that hatred you have of the world in that moment and you're comforted in that act. But see, it's the idea that young girls are spoken to in these ways. And that's when I can follow the positivity. It's not just that. It's that these articles who say, look, I may be plus size, and that's great. They speak of the body that's more fear than the back of them because rap is personal. They speak about the way that exactly harms people, and this speaks for a greater people's experience. Because again, okay, obviously doing that impact way better by showing how it relates to people, and that's why they're more likely to equal cases and feel better about themselves. But crucially, then, when speaking to women, who then are young girls, young girls who all bond around this, they're likely to form a community, and you have this new space with things like the bars and people who all love Doja Cat and all these things together, and they're able to relate to each other then and get access to a community which they are previously denied. The last claim is that sexuality is reclaimed as a subject. Because it is personal, you speak about sex from your perspective, that means you can talk about denying men in a way that was normally not previously used, and it means you can be sexual, because what's wrong with that? Thank you. I think you can grow up now from the government and the government substantive. <laughs> Yeah, I've changed my mind about streaming. Can I... Yeah, just turn it off. <laughs> just turn off the camera and then. Or you can just make them stare at the whiteboard for a second. Okay, we'll
Ready? Mark Rutherford the Gaul is calling me a fucking boomer. And the one example you have that actually did anyway well in the charts came in 2014. That's why Dot hadn't heard of it. The birthday song is fucking ancient. It is a representation of A, a person that only actually did well in the charts for maybe even six months, versus what we could do is like, I hate to do the modern thing. Actual bloody reasons why rap has become more palatable, more focused on things that are credible to the average person's existence, like things like mental health, like things like what good sex is, like things like, uh, like I don't actually even need to stand over the female rap goddesses that exist in the world, I obviously will. But even if we win this debate by telling you that modern rap has become one that speaks about mental health struggles, economic struggles, class struggles, it is the women that are most tarnished by those problems that get the catharsis from listening to that music. I don't care if it's a man that helps me focus with my mental health issues that I have from living in a patriarchal world that continuously tells me I'm not enough, that I'm not good enough, that I get laughed at when I try not for POIs against big old men debaters who, who either fucking afraid to take a POI from me or don't think I'm likely to win the debate. But I tell you that if I get mental health catharsis from listening to modern rap, I don't give a fuck if it's a man or a woman. Modern rap helps women Here's the logical reasoning for this. Women live in a world that is really patriarchal and crap to them. They are often most underpaid in society. Often the poorest of the poor are young women of color or like, yeah, of various different colors, but depending on the country. The reason that this is so important is even before we step into the women rappers being good or bad for women as well, I want to tell you that it is the language of mental health that is so important. This is where I'm going to use closing government logic to beat them. Their claim is to win, and actually Harish as well, but they, I think they kind of say it nicer, but Harish technically did say it first, which is, it is authenticity, or Harish raises it, doing what's been done before, uh, that, that allows you to succeed in the space. I actually want to call racism on the entire proposition bench. The logic that they give then is, it is more authentic to the black man's experience to talk about beating up a woman than it is to talk about the mental health problems that you have the economic struggles that you have, the love for your mother that was maybe a single mother and raised you. Like, I don't know what line we call modern because if it's for each modern probably doesn't include Tupac. Tupac talked about his mother being a fucking goddess. In Brenda Have a Baby, he talked about teenagers who couldn't afford to raise their kids. If you want to go into Machine Gun Kelly, who I think is the funniest current modern, he talks about his girlfriend being a goddess, that he could only foot lick her pussy because that made him somewhat worthy. Men speak about their current experiences. We will give you that. It gives them legitimacy in the space. We will give you that. My challenge is you never gave us reason why their current experience is beating women. You just assumed it was as a panel of four boys who do not listen to rap or hip hop, obviously. Marcus, you do your examples are fucking terrible, right? I think that this takes proposition out of the debate because all they did was appeal to senses of what outdated impressions of rap are, what the white man has been saying about rap, which then feeds into my partner's case. Because the reason the white man for years has said that rap music is one of violence or one of rape or one of problematic behavior is because it was the language of protest. It was the language of protest to try to speak truth to power, to call the white man out for what they were doing. The fact that Brenda has a baby and that a uh, younger out there couldn't feed her child was because the white man was taking the money from the black community that they got black girls pregnant and left them to raise them themselves. And I tell you that it is these songs that are the only thing, and in many cases, even if it doesn't solve the problem, it gives that girl catharsis. It means she's sitting there and she knows that someone else in the world has given her the words to understand her emotions. Not every young person in the world knows how to fully articulate the mental health problems that are going through their head. If they want to listen to be it Machine Gun Kelly, be it Megan Thee Stallion, be it Eminem in some cases, because actually some of this stuff on mental health is fucking class. I think that that means that you get catharsis at the point where you're able to enjoy that. Why is this so important in this debate? Everyone else in this debate has just claimed that women are sexualized and that's bad. 
three things on this. One, zero comparative nature in this. No, zero comparative nature in this. Women have been sexualized since the fucking dawn of existence. Rat did not invent that. Oh, to their credit, does say that. Two more things on this. On the bloody market analysis, we get from opening opposition. How do you succeed in the market is standing out and being different and being more authentic. Palmer explained to you why you are more likely to get hit if you have an authentic experience that speaks true to young people. Young people are becoming more aware of their mental health problems, more aware of things like feminism, more aware of their body, body self-consciousness and, and eating disorders and all of these various things. Meaning this is why I'm likely about analysis. We are more likely to receive more rap songs that feed into that market. The number one album in the second week of December in the United Kingdom was by a guy called Red who wrote an entire album about mental health it went to number one in this country because the amount of young people that got behind it and wanted to hear about his struggle and felt reflected. He beat out some of the biggest people in this country because young people for the first time felt like their struggles were being represented. Go. Classes, music that's rooted in protest, and music that screams fuck the system. Why can't they listen to punk, Detroit techno, folk, drum and bass, or Some like that, some like rap. That is the answer. I get my catharsis from listening to heavy beats and then you might get it from pumping techno. That makes sense why none of your examples make sense because that's probably your music case. This is why ultimately opening the opening thing of music is where it's whoops. Why is it bad to talk? Like, why is, is genuinely saying women rapping is bad? Like, don't follow that, right? Like, why is music worse because it speaks about women? Why is music worse because it speaks about mental health? Why is music worse because it speaks about things? Lastly, on this market thing, they wanted to say that this feeds in the, the, the opening government, that the market feeds into. Uh, you know, men, men have all the money. No, because the market was largely saturated for that. And do you know why we are logically more likely to be correct in this debate? Because if it is true that you're the economic shill that open government are, you look at young women who are an untapped market and you phrase your music for them so that they get enjoyment out of it and they want to buy into it. Mine only says quarter to what? Mine says six to what? Ignore. Yeah, and um, you phrase music to those young women who are in the mar market. So even if you want to say that it's an economic thing that fucks people over, women were the only top market, all rap, up until the like, mid-2000s, I want to say, right? Meaning, again, more logical reasons why, not just examples like our opening, why we were likely to get our benefit on our side. If you want to stand out, if you want to be up, if you want to tap into a new market, you tap into things that help women. That is why we've given you the reasons we won this debate and not just been racist or in the 80s, begging to oppose. All right, uh, thanks everyone for a wonderful round. Um, if you had a uh, social venue, it's just like that way now. Sorry, that my base is my clock time. <laughs> yeah, um, I think clips. Um, one of our one of our members will be there. There's gonna be three drink vouchers, but I think you can only redeem it like in the basement or in the salad bar. But it's a nice place anyways. I think that's right. I think like back to the end. Yeah. Another fuck funny. I think it's going to be paid by the water clock. What's, what's the, you know, it was, it was easier oh, back no, then. Yeah, if you paid your rent for the April QR, that's just why you're getting some stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. 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 Why are you modern and you call me a boomer? Why do you think modern? Well, I didn't talk about it too much, so if you were like 2014, I'm not like, I, 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 I was going to be a star, I can be modern. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Jane's choice is not modern, get <laughs>